Whether you're a professional welder looking to broaden your horizons or a complete beginner looking to understand the basics of welding or even a welding instructor seeking unique educational content for your students. This video was created specially for you. As a supplement to our welding white paper, common welding methods and the use of laser illumination in welding imaging. This video consists of four main parts. Introduction Welding processes Imaging techniques and objects of imaging Part 4 Objects of imaging Welding processes contain a number of components and phenomena that can be imaged with the techniques described in Part 3. In the visualization of welding processes, the focus is naturally on visible features. By imaging and studying such features, it is possible to detect and prevent defects, as well as control and optimize the process. Here are some points of interest for imaging. 1. Groove and joint. Groove refers to the space between the workpieces to be joined together or to a channel in the surface of a single workpiece. Groove is the space in which melted metal is directed and where the seam is formed. In groove welding, some preparation of the joint is usually necessary. Some properties of the groove are crucial to achieve a successful weld. These properties include the shape of the edge of the workpieces joined together, the shape of the groove between the workpieces, the height of the workpiece in comparison to each other, and the alignment of the workpieces. All of these properties can be visualized and tracked throughout the process. Joints refer to the joining together of two or more workpieces. However, grooves are also found on the surface of single workpieces. In welding, the location of the joint in relation to the welding torch is crucial for forming a strong, smooth seam. Precise guiding of the heat improves the weld quality. This is especially critical in LBW, where seams are often narrow and any deviation may cause lack of sidewall fusion. By combining the visualization of welding process with powerful analysis algorithms, it is possible to track as well as make automated adjustments to the location of the welding torch in relation to the joint. 2. Filler wire, droplets and spatter Filler wire GMAW and SMAW use a consumable wire that is fed through the welding gun at an even rate. The electric arc forms between the wire electrode and the workpiece. The material of the wire depends on the material of the workpiece as well as other features of the welding process and it affects the quality of the weld. In GTAW and PAW, the filler wire is fed to the weld area from outside the welding torch as a non-consumable electrode is used to form the arc. Droplets As the filler wire melts, droplets of the filler metal are transferred to the workpiece to form the weld seam. The main reason to image and study droplets is to identify problems with regular droplet formation and optimize the process to get rid of any issues. The position of the filler wire in relation to the groove is also crucial to achieving a well-formed seam. Spatter Spatter consists of weld material droplets that splash around the workbench or workpieces during the welding process. Due to its high temperature, Spatter can cause damage to the working area if it is not prepared for and it can leave undesired round marks on the finished products. In addition to visual defects, spatter marks can cause corrosion. Spatter can originate from either filler wire or the melt pool and is especially typical of GMAW. Factors that can cause spatter include impurities on the workpiece surface, some shielding gases, certain properties of the arc, welding angle, and the filler wire speed. 3. Electrode 
In GTAW and PAW, a non-consumable tungsten electrode is placed on the middle of the welding torch. The electric or plasma arc forms between the electrode and the workpiece. The properties of the electrode visualized and studied include the condition of the electrode and its position in relation to the workpiece. 4. Arc An electric arc forms between the filler wire or the electrode and workpiece in arc welding. The arc is the result of an electric discharge and it is what heats up the metal in welding. Due to its high levels of brightness, the arc is difficult to visualize. Laser illumination is all but necessary to capture the properties of the arc, as most of the brightness can be filtered out. Schlieren setups with high power light sources can be used to study how the arc interacts with the workpiece. 5. Shielding gas Shielding gas is a gas mixture that flows from the welding gun or torch continuously during welding. The shielding gas protects the melted material from oxidization to ensure the strength of the joint. The shielding gas is an important element in welding, as an uninterrupted optimal flow of the gas ensures the weld does not come into contact with contaminants in the air. Contamination may lead to arc instability, oxidization, porosity, and spatter. Furthermore, the plasma and the arc spots can be influenced negatively by coming into contact with oxygen or other atmospheric gases. Shielding gas is one of the most studied components of welding. Information on the flow and the functionality of shielding gases is valuable. For example, in the development process of new welding gun and torches. The most important feature of welding guns and torches in terms of shielding gas is a functional nozzle that lets the gas flow without separation or turbulence. Stewart et al. report that for analysis of shielding gas flows, both laser Doppler anemometry or LDA and particle image velocimetry or PIV have been tested. PIV was more effective of these two as it made non-intrusive and temporally resolved direction of the two-dimensional gas flow field possible in GMAW and GTAW. The downside of the two analysis methods is, however, that the costs are high and the mastering of the measuring technique requires dedication. 6. Melt pool Melt pool refers to melted weld metal that has not yet solidified, which means that it is found at the spot currently being welded. Factors that affect the shape and behavior of the melt pool include the welding speed, the power use, and the focal point. Understanding the qualities of the melt pool is important for optimizing the incorporation of filler material droplets in the melt pool and as a result, minimizing the amount of spatter. 7. Keyhole A keyhole forms in the middle of the melt pool as the arc heats up the material and parts of it vaporize. Keyholes are especially important in LBW, where the laser beam vaporizes the weld material efficiently, forming a keyhole via which the energy transmits to the surrounding areas. Crucial features of the keyhole include its size, shape, behavior, all of which affect the quality of the weld. The keyhole is closely related to the melt pool. We hope that you enjoyed this video and you learned something new about welding. By liking, commenting, subscribing and sharing this video on your social media, it will make it easier for us to decide if we should make more similar content in the future. For more information, please visit our website, cavitar.com.